All right, everyone. So for our third day of SEO for business, we're going to take a few notes, a few conceptual notes, then I'll give you a handout, and then we'll get more concrete. Um, I'm going to write some notes here on the computer, and I'll make them available for you in the network folder by the end of the day. But if you'd like to write some notes on your own paper, you could. <coughs> And so here we have three pillars of SEO. Three things that we're going to base our efforts of SEO upon. We have authority. I'm sorry, let me do it in order. Longevity first, then authority, and then content these three concepts, these three pillars are things that we need to think about <clears throat> to help improve our SEO. Longevity means how long has your website existed? How long have you had that online presence? How long have you had your little piece of the internet? So longevity is the length of time your online presence exists. online presence. Technically, it doesn't have to be a website. It could be how long you've been on Facebook or Twitter or how long have you had that email newsletter. So basically how long have you have you existed online because if you and your competitor have the same sort of brand <coughs> concept or product, the search engines are gonna give your competitor a little bit more preference if they've been around a year before you, let's say. So the longer you are online, the more it helps your SEO. Or what we'll call it your rankings. So I uh, haven't created my website yet. I want to create it as soon as possible to get online or maybe I have my website for five years, um, that's going to help you. We can look up any website to see how long they've been around. So just for fun, let's um, open up your web browser, and I'll give you this website. There's many websites that will give you this info. It's like the phone book. I can get on the phone book. My phone number will be there. People can contact me or a business. We can look at whois.icann.org. Let's go to the website whois.icann.org. I can, I forget what it stands for, but it's the big internet company about something. And it basically is the place, it's the world's phone book. It's where all of the websites are saved at. All of the names, that is, all the names of the dot coms and the dot net and bizzes and dot co's and dot us's and dot uk's, everything. There's a directory listing here, but you can access this data from anywhere. You can access it from GoDaddy. You can go to whois.com and they've got a version of the data anywhere. I just want to go here, whois.ican.org, and what we get then is a box here, enter a domain. We can look up a domain here to get some basic information about it, just for fun. You can put any domain here that you want, but if you'd like to try this, one of my oldest websites, vmcink.net. You can look that one up or any other one. And so, depending on many factors that I'll talk about in a moment, this is looking up information on websites on the basic registration information of websites. Whenever you register a website at GoDaddy or Bluehost or Cox or Yahoo, whatever, it asks you to fill in a bunch of information. And that information basically ends up here. And we're doing a who is search. It might ask you for a code here because we're all doing it at once. But anyway, searching for this information, and there it is. There's my information. My name, address, phone number, registration information. My website is registered at GoDaddy. Um, there's a phone number to contact GoDaddy for abuse and such. 
later on here, important dates. So last update is created. So the website was created in 2002. So 13, 14 years ago, because it was, I registered it on my birthday. So 14 years ago, we created that website. It's still around. It was last updated a year ago. It expires in two years. And then other information, little technical information down here. And I've got this set up pretty open. You probably sometimes would see that it says private, 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 or it has a, a proxy company that um, hides this info. Uh, when you register a website, this is all going to be public, just like getting on the phone book. But just like the phone book, you can pay to remove yourself from the phone book. You can pay to make your information here private. Bluehost and GoDaddy and all of them sell domain uh, privacy. So you pay some amount monthly, yearly, I don't know what it is, and then they will put their name here instead of yours so that your information is private. Because yeah, this is a phone, this is a real phone number, this is a real address. Real people could contact me and so could spammers. So unfortunately spammers could use this to find out a little bit about who owns a website and start sending them spam email. Um, if you don't want to deal with that, you can pay for the private registration and then your information will be safe. But if you want to do it the free way, well it's still not quite free, but if you want to do it the free way, you can get a PO box instead of your real home address. You can get a free Google Voice phone number for the phone number. And it's not a good idea to make this stuff up just because you don't want to get your information out there. If you make this up, technically you're in violation of the terms of service. They could shut your website down. It's not a good idea to make it up. Either put in, you know, <coughs> P.O. Box information and such, or pay for the private registration. What I'm showing you here is this is a website that's been around a while, 2002. One of my websites here. So it's still around, you can still look it up, it's still pretty active, although I need to update it. For curiosity's sake, up at the search here, I'll search for the college's website, sdce.edu. So we have .net, .com, .biz, .edu, .uk, .mx, .he, .az, .za, etc. But I'm going to look up sdce.edu, confirm that I'm a real person, not a spammer. The information might look a little bit different. It depends on a variety of reasons. EDUs are, are a little bit special compared to dot coms and the like because they can only be given to educational institutes. But here's some information. Kent Kieser is the Director of Information Technology, Contact Information. What else do I see? Technical contact, Glenn Bowers. And then if we look here, domain record activated August 2004. So the college has had a website for um, 12 years. Expires this year on the 31st. Did I mention it in this class that for about three hours, Someone last year owned Google.com and it wasn't Google. Someone that used to work at Google realized, hey, the Google domain is about to expire. And he tried to, when it expired, to buy it and he bought it for $12. He owned Google.com for like two hours until they realized what happened and they, they canceled the order and Google got it back. But I just noticed here this year this domain expires. Um, and I would think with the budget that they have, they would register for 10 years so that it doesn't ac accidentally get lost. That happens. There's a cottage industry there. Spammers set up software to check when domains are going to expire. As soon as they expire, they buy them. And now you want it again, suddenly your domain costs five times more than what you originally paid. So always keep up to date with when your domains will expire. You can buy them for one year, three years, five years, ten years so that you don't lose that name. Because as I'm saying here, authority is one of the important, I'm sorry, longevity is one of the important aspects of SEO. The longer your website exists, the more it could help your 
rankings. One more. Let's two more. Let me look up Southwestern College. SWCCD.edu. A year later, Southwestern College set up their domain, and yours also seems to expire. Maybe because it's an edu, it expires in different ways, but they're both July 31st. Interesting. 2005. Semic.org. Here's the last one. Apple.com. Again, you could look all of this stuff up. It's, it's all public knowledge, pretty much. Domain administrator, address, phone number, etc. Important to dates. Updated, created, 1987. Now, technically, there were not websites in 1987. Websites were invented in 1989. But this is uh, this could have been a private server or a server accessible by other means like FTP or Telnet or Archie or whatever. Um, and so Apple has had an online presence on their website since 1987, and they have it claimed until 2021. So wait until 2021, you might be able to take Apple's name if they don't forget to renew it. Okay, here's the last one, because I am curious. Microsoft. I might have broken it. But the point here is to check, uh, you can check the, any of these things. You can check your competitor. How long have they had their website? At the very least, you'll get information about uh, the length of, of the, the, the time the website has existed. Maybe it won't have any contact information and such because people buy private registration. Um, but if you do want to have better SEO rankings, the longer you have an online presence, the better. And you might say, well, I don't have a website, and my competitor has been around for a year, so all is lost. I'll never be better than my competitor, right? No, we have the next two things that help you counteract that. There's no way for you to, to change it so that you suddenly have a website that's 10 years old. There's just no way to do it. You register the website, it exists at this point, you cannot go back in time and change some setting to give you an extra year. It is what it is. But you can counteract that with authority and content. So authority. Why should your content rank highly? Become a timely and relevant source. You want to build authority on your online presence <coughs> to help counteract the longevity issue. You want to create content. You want to make a great website that is functional and useful, uh, modern. You want to blog on a regular basis, you want to use Twitter, you want to create content, you want to comment on people's websites, and I'll go over these details again when we get to them, but you want to do something to become an authority. Because think about it like this, if you uh, wrote a term paper in high school or college, especially college, let's say a 10-page paper, you turn in that 10-page paper, um, without a works cited page, without references, that paper gets an F because you didn't specify where you got your knowledge from because, sorry, you were not smart enough to put together that 10-page paper without standing on the shoulders of giants. You did not create this knowledge out of thin air. You went to the library, you went online, you read journals, and you you, get, you gathered references to synthesize into your own version of that knowledge. You turn it in with your works cited, with your references, you get a good grade. I say that because you had 
uh, you had referenced authorities in whatever field. This is this term paper on the effects of electroradiation on the cells of milk. And so you checked authorities on those topics and you made your paper. What it, how this applies for us in SEO is that I want my website to be an authority for other websites to reference, for other websites to link to, for other websites to help me rank higher. Because if I have become a timely and relevant source, more links to my site help my rankings. Links from other websites to my website help my rankings. Let me back up here. I'm going to say quality links to my site help my rankings. If other quality websites link to my website, I become a quality website. And the search engines see all of these connections. The search engines are running 24 hours a day, scanning the whole internet. They're going to see that this website is connected to that website, and that website is a good website, therefore you're a good website because you got connected to, you got endorsed in a way, you, you were referenced by a good website, therefore you're a good website. Do you think the opposite is true? What if a bad website links to you? The opposite is also true. If you've got a lot of not quality websites, a lot of spam websites linking to you, the search engines will see that spam website links with that website, it must be a spam website. They're all linking together. <coughs> so that's negative SEO. Negative SEO could be real for a real problem for you as well. You, you have all of these websites that are poor, low-quality spam farm websites linking to your website. That's going to drag you down, even though I believe you, you're not a spammer. But the search engines won't. The search engines are guilty until proven innocent. They are guilty by association. They are shoot first, ask questions later. The search engines in the ever, ever waged war against spam has to do those tactics. The search engines have to rank have to make sweeping generalizations and put your site down on the search results because you've got a link from a bad site. One of the things we'll talk about today is identifying that. What are my links? What are the good ones? What are the bad ones? What to do about the good ones? What to do about the bad ones? We'll get to that today. But here, the importance is that you have links back to your site. And you're going to get links back to your site and authority because you've got content. Again, what are you what are you creating? What are you sharing? Is it interesting? Relevant authoritative useful, etc. Whatever positive terms you want to use. Am I tweeting something interesting? Am I posting something on Facebook? Am I blogging? Are you blogging? Are you on social media? On review or testimonial sites? Meaning Yelp and uh, TripAdvisor, <coughs> Angie's List, whatever. Is there that content of mine out there to the world, uh, for the world to consume, to, to share? Because if I have a blog post about the top five tax tips, let's say I'm a tax preparation business, I'm going to have a blog post, the top five tax pitfalls. I'm going to give away a free article about the top five tips. Uh, I don't think that's going to be enough information for someone to do their uh, to do their taxes like a pro. But I'm giving out free content on a regular basis because I'm going to become an authority in that field for as long as I can. I'm going to put out that content. It might get shared. Someone shares it on their Facebook. There's a link from their Facebook back to my website. Link back. Maybe another blogger that read my blog about those great tips writes a, 
that writes a rebuttal to it or an addition to it or something, and that other blogger links back to my blog, I'm getting more authority, I'm getting links back. And if that other blogger has been around for 10 years, and I've been around only 8 years, their 8 years, because of their authority, is helping mine, because I'm getting a link back. Content to get backlinks. That term right there, we'll explore it a little bit more later, but backlinks. Another term is inbound links, incoming links, links to your site. So I want to get backlinks, build my authority for as long as possible. Does that make sense? Any questions? Yeah, you yes. Uh, since you want other sites, etc., to link to you, could you make your own other site just for the heck of it and then link to your main site? In the old days, that was a technique. It was a technique for me to buy my main website and three more websites and link them back to my main website. But if I can do that, and I'm a nice guy, the spammers can do that. And the spammers abuse that because they would buy a thousand websites and link them back to their main website. So it's not a good idea anymore to link your own sites back, especially if they don't relate. If I've got Victor's Bakery and Victor's Dog Walking and Victor's Realty, why would they all link together? They don't have a meaning to link together. But if I've got Victor's Bakery and Victor's Organic Gluten-Free dot com and I got Victor's how to recipes you know they all relate to food that would be okay to a degree to link to each other but if the websites don't relate they're gonna hurt you but it is okay to do it then if they relate if they relate and they do not duplicate content mm. if you don't have the exact same blog post on all three of them you have different blog posts different content because then the search chances will see that as a spam technique and guilty by association. If you if you walk like a spam and talk like a spam, you're a spam. Sometimes I have, not really anymore recently, but sometimes I would have students coming in here. I remember this one guy, he would take this SEO class. During the break, he would then talk to people in hushed tones. Hey, I, I know this software that will help you create a thousand links to your site. And it's only $20. You want in on it. And so they talk, and then after they're finished talking, and he leaves, and I tell the person, don't buy that software. Because it might give you temporary boost in, in rankings and such, but these search engines are getting smarter and smarter. They're looking for the, they're looking for the, you know, the shady techniques. They're, they're looking for the anon anomalous things. And if your site is anomalous, if it's following a pattern of a spammer, you're going to get dinged, you're going to get caught up in the dragnet, and you're going to get treated like a spammer. You're going to end up on page 40 or 400. And sometimes it's hard to get out of that hole of SEO because it's hard to win back their trust. What about the website? Yes, if you have a related to the back name, or somebody is coming to back name, how are you going to you know, stay away from those things? We have a, a technique that we'll be able to do once I give a handout called disavow links. We're going to say that bad link does not relate to me, Google, don't pay attention to it. We'll be able to do that. It'll be a little activity a little bit later. We can disavow links. So that's for the bad links. For the good links, we'll talk about what to do about that in a little while too. So the reason we set up those webmaster tools, one of the many reasons we set up the webmaster tools last week, is to check this. Are there websites linking to my website, and are they good or are they bad? If they're good, what to do about them, we'll talk about. If they're bad, what to do about them, we'll talk about that. So I'm going to give you a handout, and then um, we're going to then get back into our webmaster tools eventually, but we're going to have a little lecture first on this handout and other things and then um, and then we'll proceed but I'm going to give you first this um, I'm going to give you a couple of excerpts from the book remember I recommended a book in this class two books 
They're very affordable. Three ninety nine each. Three dollars and ninety nine cents or so. It's on the syllabus. But I'm gonna pull it up on my on my reader here. Um, if you get the digital version of the book, you you don't need a Kindle to actually read them. You can read it on the website. You can read it on your iPhone or iPad or Android phone. You you get a free Kindle app. And so here I've got the books in my online library. I can watch, I can read them whenever I want. These are the two books I'm recommending. Uh, so I'm going to show you a couple of excerpts from from the book, but not everything, of course, because you you want to look at the book yourself. It's very affordable. And um, obviously, I don't want to violate any copyrights, so this is for educational purposes only. Um, I need to pull up the all right ch chapter. One thing that sometimes happens is that the table of contents doesn't want to behave, so I'll just have to skip a few pages here. Okay, so... There's a simple graphic here that's going to show what I just said, that if you have quality links pointing to your website, that helps your search engine rankings. As you build quality links to your page, your page will move up in the search results. Um, because as I said the example earlier, uh, you wrote that research paper and you used references that bolstered your claim. So the search engines think of it in those terms as well. Other websites that come to your website, that must be good. You must be a good website, if those original websites are also good. Um, it mentions about having backlinks on pages in a different niche than your own did once work. However, after the update, it doesn't work anymore. If you had a website on Breeding Goldfish and you had 100 links, but 95% of those were not related. There were things about auto maintenance and Viagra, etc. What is that done in the search engine? So just because we have 100 links to our site, but they're not related to what our site is, that could be detrimental as well. That's why when we look into the webmaster tools, we'll see who's linking to us. No, worse, it puts you down lower. It doesn't ignore you. It sees that there's all of these sites that don't relate to you. They think you're spam, so they lower you. They won't ignore you. Um, it goes on to say, well, what about negative SEO? What if I've got bad sites linking to me? What if I've got low-quality spam sites and sites that are not related to my website? That could decrease your rankings. Guilt by association. So one of the most important things we'll talk about today is disavow links. We'll talk about, I have these weird, and I hate to say it, these weird Russian websites linking to me, but you know, this, a lot of the spam traffic is coming from Eastern Europe and Russia and such, and um, China, unfortunately, a lot of these countries are really spamming a lot. And so, um, well, people have bad websites linking to my website, what do I do about it? We'll see, we can disavow the links. We'll say, don't pay attention to these links, Google or Bing, don't pay attention to them. They don't represent my site. We'll see how to do that. So then he goes on to say, first and foremost, go for quality, not quantity. It's better to have you know, five valuable real links to your site than a hundred links from a bunch of different topics. To be seen as a real authority, your site needs incoming links from other authority sites. Since that update, I no longer recommend using any type of automated link building tool. What? So this is saying the old way. You could buy software that would create a bunch of links to your site. Or you could buy subscriptions that would create a lot of links to your site. And in the old days that worked because the search engines weren't as savvy. They would simply see many links to your site, 
you must be popular, let's rank you higher. Now it has to see many bad, weird spam sites to your site, you must be spam too. So the question, if I cannot use automated link building tools, how can I get enough links to rank well? And it says, well, to answer that, do you believe your page deserves to rank well based on the quality of the content and the authority of your site? If your answer is no, then you will have to go down the black hat SEO path to get your page ranked, and ultimately that path will lead to penalties and lost rankings. So the question is, that's the part about authority and content. Do you have stuff on your website that deserves to be placed on the first page of results or the second page? If you don't have something new or interesting or relevant or authoritative, why would the search engines rank you that high? Just because you use these tricks? No, because the tricks change, the techniques change. It's still about the content, the quality of your content. It's saying, yeah, you could go through the routes of black hat SEO. As I've said before, those are the techniques that uh, either don't work anymore or actually are negative, but they might give you a bump in the very short term. In the long term, you're going to end up on page 400 for having, you know, two weeks of being number one, and then you're on page 400 after that because you use these spam techniques, black hat SEO techniques. It goes on to say, I'm sure you're concerned about building incoming links to your pages. What's the best way to proceed? Um, goes on to say the best backlinks. The very best backlinks that you can get to your site are the ones that you do not create. These are backlinks from other sites where you did not request the link nor did you have any say in the anchor text that is used in the link. These types of backlinks are the holy grail and they're the most difficult to get. Obviously, if I can't ask another website, hey, link to me, if I can't write an article for another website and put links to back, back to my own site, how can I get backlinks? That's what this next chapter is going to talk about here, which I'll tell us a little bit about. But that's what we want. We want links from other websites, other quality websites, back to my website. <coughs> Easier said than done. But as I said in this class, we're doing this the hard way. We're not going to pay to rank highly. We're not going to pay for these spam techniques. We're going to go the long way which builds a better website in the long term. Basically, the best way of getting this type of backlink is to develop content that your visitors love and want to share. Develop content on your site that other site owners will want to link to. It sounds obvious. Create good things, and you'll get traffic. You'll get good traffic. Obviously, easier said than done. So here are some examples of what to do. It's got, a, it's got several here. I'll mention the ones that I like and the ones that I don't recommend. But infographics, for example, this is the one I, I like and I recommend to engage in this. An infographic are graphical representations of complex topics. You've probably seen these before. Let me pull one up here. Uh, let's see. Uh, school attendance infographic. high school graduation and GED. This could be information that could be a very boring spreadsheet or a very basic PowerPoint presentation, but it's presented as an infographic. Let's see. High school 2009 graduation rates. So the different age ranges. No, that's the percentages. Yeah, so you know, 80 to 85 percent of graduation in California, only 45 to 50 percent in Nevada so forth. So that could have been a very boring, you know, bar chart. But here it's showing at a glance this information which has the, which states have the highest um, rates of graduation. New Jersey, pretty high up there, looks like. One in every seven Americans with high school credentials received a GED. Okay, so over here, status dropout rate. Um, so the dropout rate throughout the years, broken up by demographics. In 2007, California had the most dropouts of any state, 710,000. 
out of a population of 30 something million. So that could have been a very boring statistic also. So this is an infographic showing kind of boring information but some way visually interesting. You've probably seen these before. Let's see another one along the same lines. Let's see what about this one. When, well, I was I was getting to that one moment. So on this particular one, uh, it looks even more complex because there's a lot of graphics and text and such. And the, the thing about this particular tip of using infographics, I like it, but obviously it's a little more complex, isn't it? If you do have graphic design experience, you can create something like this. There are also apps and software. There's infographic templates, infographic generators, infographic makers for free, for paid, etc. You can look up these services, you can feed it the data, and it'll make you an infographic. The reason that the book lists this as the number one example of content is because people love to share these. You've probably seen these on your internet travels. You've seen it on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or your inbox. You've seen these, you like them, maybe you forwarded them. So right there, you're, you're, you're elevating the, uh, the authority of the original creators of the infographic. You're possibly giving them more traffic. I want that. I have this, um, you know, I have um, a web design company and I want to get more clients so I can make an infographic that says the ratio of success to spending on graphic designers. And I can make some sort of graphic that shows that as you spend more on graphic design, you get more back from sales, from new clients. This kind of effort, obviously, takes more effort. You have to design it yourself. You have to contract once someone to make it. You have to use an app or a template or something. But the rewards of that could be pretty high because let me show you this. One of my former students who is now also a colleague, we, we've also worked together, Chuck, has, an, has, an, has a Pinterest account. So another social network. He's got a Pinterest account. And if you don't know Pinterest, you make pin boards. You make different like folders to organize pictures and videos and content. So he's got a Pinterest, he's got a pin board, he's got a he's got an organizational unit, he's got a he's got a little folder where he puts in infographics, not all the ones that he makes, but ones that he finds throughout the web. And so he created the Pinterest um, infographic pin board. It's got 2,000 infographics in there. So at the very least, you want to check out his profile to, to check out these infographics. But Chuck is working Pinterest really well. He's a superstar on Pinterest. Because it shows up here, he's got 33,000 followers on Pinterest. He's got all of these different bits of content that he shares on Pinterest. All of those infographics, every time he posts a new infographic, potentially 33,000 people see it. That's the whole point of social media. I want more followers. I want more people that pay attention to me on social media so that when I post something, more people can see it. He's got his own board here about the great web designs he sees, perhaps even his own. So he puts in a new web design portfolio here. Thousands of people might see it, and some percentage of them might hire him, might contact him and say, I need a website for my company. I see that you're talented with it. Let me hire you or at least let me contact you. So you're saying that first picture you showed us on the left is an example of an infographic because it's a picture plus four words? It is, but what I'm saying is that this whole thing is like a little folder full of infographics. He just, it just needs a cover graphic to tell you what you're about to look at. Here's a, a board of cool photos. So he's got one cool photo and 600 more to show you. This one has 2,000 infographics to look at. Pinterest slash Mosher, M-O-S-H-E-R, 13. 
His username, his full name is Chuck Dow. So I, I show you his social media here for a couple of reasons. One is that there are many avenues for you to reach an audience. He's got 33,000 followers on Pinterest. On, on, on uh, Twitter, I think he's only got about 300. And then on you know Facebook, he's another few hundred or whatever. So he tapped into something that worked really worf well for him on Pinterest. Then there is an audience there. You know, there's like a hundred million users on Pinterest. You can find your audience in just about any social network if you put the time and effort into it. In his infographic board, you, you usually can't see very much on Pinterest. They really force you to sign in or sign up. But let's see what we can see here. Yeah, right away it's saying, please sign in. But his own is going to show back here what happens on any given sales day. This sales guy here, as opposed to this guy, what are they doing per day? Again, this is going to be a very boring spreadsheet. Mobile gaming by the numbers. It's worth $33 billion on video games. And uh, how much is spent on this and that and all of that how to create content ideas for a new client. So that might be something to look at yourself also, getting ideas on what to do online, on social media. And again, at a certain point, it's just going to pop up and say, sign in to Pinterest, a tourist's global guide to tipping. So you can't really see it at all there, but there's a little part here about on, in India you do want to tip for this and that, for South America you don't want to tip for that and this. So that could be that could be a possibility of content that you're creating to build your authority to help your rankings. Any questions? Any more questions on the infographics? The next item here, I don't recommend this one. I don't recommend scripts and tools that people will bookmark and share. That's too complex. If you do this, great, but you're probably going to spend your time and money elsewhere better. What I mean by this is, what if I'm a, a fitness company? On my website, I could have a free calorie counter app. You're not going to find a free template for that. You're going to need to have someone program that, design it, and make it work. So I don't recommend number two, although they could be very valuable. Your very cool fitness tracking app or widget could be shared all over Facebook and make you viral. But I think it's a very high bar to reach in order to even start to compete. Don't worry about this one at all, really. Don't make your own apps unless you like that. widgets, add-ons, plugins, apps. What's that? Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm saying don't do this one. This one's. I I wouldn't really bother with this one. It's very complex. Question. So basically, you have to follow something related to your website to follow some somebody to know that they, I guess, the related links are good, right? That's one thing we'll look at also. I want to follow other people's websites, and they may follow my website or link back to my website too. Yes, so there is a lot of different angles to all of this. Number three, forums. This is another one I don't really recommend. I don't recommend that you create a forum on your website because once you become, once you create forums, then you have to become a forum moderator. You have to keep track of the spam comments and delete them. You have to delete people's comments that are not on topic. You have to now get another job <coughs> being a moderator of your forum, and you've got to run your business. So I don't recommend this one unless you have the time and the effort or someone to do it for you. I would recommend instead segue this over to social media. It's a lot easier to run social media than a forum because Twitter has the website for free. Facebook has the website. Google has the website. Here you have to install this on your own website. You have to maintain it. You have to make sure the the software is updated and you don't have vulnerabilities and all of that. So don't bother with forums. Don't create a forum on your own site. 
But the opposite of that, I will say, yes, you participate in forums, like you were saying a moment ago. You go on other people's forums, other people's websites, and comment. You be active on other people's websites, because I could get you links and traffic back to your own website. I wouldn't bother making your own forums on your own website. Let me show a concrete example here. Brown-Eyed Baker is this website about food. So they, they're a website, they're a blog, they have recipes, they post something every day. This is, got, this is from January 21st, the chicken salad with apple, raisins, and walnuts. Then they've got this one from the 19th, Joseph's first birthday. Then we've got other things. Weekend dish from the 16th. Mint buckwheat dog biscuits from the 14th. So anyway, you've got a, it has a variety of blog posts. Um, it's also got ads along the site here and there. And so this website is a big website. It's been around since 2008. It posts something all the time, every day, pretty much, creating content, building authority. They have longevity. People come to the website, they follow them on Twitter, get into 2,000 followers, and whatever they're trying to do online. Maybe they're going to sell a cookbook. Maybe they give all of these away for free, but then they're going to sell a $20 cookbook. Maybe you're going to click on the ad here, and they're going to get some money from that. People make money off of ads on their website. Whatever this company is trying to do online, they're doing it because they're also on Twitter, they're also on Pinterest, Instagram, they've got a newsletter, <coughs> videos and ads and such, although I'm, they need to optimize their ads because I'm seeing four ads for the same thing. The point of what I'm trying to say is, okay, you participate in other people's forums or comments. Let me go find over here, for example, No Bake Snowball Cookies. Um, this article came out on the 13th. It has 20 comments. So it's got pictures, it's got text, blah, blah, blah. You read about, you learn about that in the blog class. But then near the bottom, you're going to have comments, 20 responses. So Rishana wrote, these look great. Sally wrote, I've made something similar in the past. Joanna wrote, hi there, I can't follow error, I can't find error root. So, of those three people, Rishana, Sally, and Joanna, which of these three did it right? Sally did it right. She's got a link back to her website. Rishana doesn't, Joanna doesn't, Sally does. She contributed to the main conversation. She didn't write to say, hey everyone, check out my site. That'll get you deleted. She wrote, I've made something similar. These are good and remind me of Laura's. I've also made them with just the dates and nuts. Also very good. So she's contributing to the main conversation and speaking in her own link back to her own website. You want to do that. That obviously is an art and a science and takes practice. Maybe in the beginning you'll be much more in salesman mode and you'll be putting your links there a little too obviously and they'll get deleted because it looks like the, the moderators are around here. There's Laura herself. You know, they could have removed it. If you don't want to be that obvious, the other technique to do it is also, um, is also like this. We're looking at Lisa and we're looking at Molly. Of these two, Lisa and Molly, which of these two did it right? Lisa. Because Lisa has an active link. That is a clickable active link back to her website. Molly doesn't have a link back to her website. Lisa didn't put an obvious link in her text. She put a link in her name. It's going back to moneymadeit.it. Backlink. So if I go down to the bottom where I can leave a comment, this is very standard. Your name required, your email required, and your comment. Address not required. I'm going to tell you, make it required. Put your name, put your email, put your website, because that's how you get your link back to your website. That's how we saw up here 
Heather doesn't have that. Laura doesn't have that. Samantha did. Samantha's got an active link back up to what's up, Susanna.com. When she wrote it, when she wrote this comment, she also put her website address right there. So this big authoritative website with a lot of longevity and content has a link back to your website. It would be much better if there was a blog post unsolicited that I didn't control that they linked to my website. That would be much better. But here, this will give you some traffic back to your website and some positive SEO juice. But it's going to be better if I get like a write-up on their blog. At the very least here, it gets me a little bump in traffic and that might snowball. So that's forums. Don't make your own, but participate in others. Do some research like I did there. I just looked up, you know, bakers, and I found bloggers that are baking. I've got Victor's Bakery. I'm going to comment on their posts and comment, you know, subtly. Any questions on forums before we go on? Number four, this is another one I highly recommend. Free downloads like software or PDFs. If you, if you can give these away and people really do find them useful, your address will be shared with their friends on forums or social media. So I'll show you a concrete example up on our website, pmdinteractive.com. In the blog, we have an article over here about... Um, passwords, choosing a good password. Uh, so you hear all the time about websites being hacked and such. So there's an article here about websites, some tips, but then there's a PDF, a free PDF download right here. I made that in PowerPoint. You can make a very basic, you know, graphic design thing in PowerPoint. More professional would be Illustrator or InDesign, whatever. But um, just to show you here, it's 12 pages long. It's mostly graphics. There's a cover page here by the company to get the branding out there. Then there's a page that talks about the heart bleed, the heart bleed bug of a couple of years ago that made every website on the internet basically insecure. What it was, links you can put in, you can put links within your own document in PowerPoint. Then it talks about this way depending on the length of your password that could be secure and then tips on that then another way to do it is the seed approach etc so not it's 12 pages but it's not 12 pages of single spaced paragraphs it's got a lot of visual interest to it and it's broken up into pieces and then the point of that at the very end there's a recap and then at the very end there's credits links back to the website copyright logo whatever People might like that and share it on their Facebook, share it on an email. We have it here set up on the website. You can easily then share it to your friends and family. Twitter used to show how many shares I had, but they took that away. I had dozens. But anyway, that gets shared off to more people. That could get you more traffic, more links back to your website. This is not terribly difficult to create. Conceptually, it took a little while to, to create, but on a technical way to create it, that's PowerPoint. PowerPoint can create PDFs. And so this one I highly recommend, free downloads, PDFs, white papers, you know, charts, something that you can give away for free that could be useful for people. This is my company's website, pmdinteractive.com. And I'll show you right now. Um, you've got YouTube, which is a video sharing site, and you've got you've got the you've got the sort of PowerPoint of YouTube. Have you heard of slideshare.net? Slideshare is like the PowerPoint of YouTube. You can create a free account here. You can upload your PowerPoints. You can get 
downloads, you can get views, you can get likes and shares and all of that. This is all free. Slideshare.net. Uh, very popular. It's been around a few years. So popular that LinkedIn bought them. I don't know for how, for how much, but it was hundreds of millions of dollars uh, sometime last year. LinkedIn bought Slideshare. And so LinkedIn has hundreds of millions of users. I see it. I see statistic of there between 200 million and 400 million. I don't know the exact number. Lots of people use LinkedIn. <coughs> Slideshare is getting integrated with LinkedIn, so that's more audience. But I bring this up because this is another way to share your, your content. You're not getting any traffic to your website right now. But what if you put that PowerPoint on your blog and Slideshare, and you start to become popular on Slideshare? Well, then you're going to make more traffic come back to your website from, this, from these followers. So you, I, could, you, I could probably help you think about what kind of three-page, five-page, ten-page document can I create about my business, every business. You can do something like that. In the blog class, we don't exactly do that, but in the blog class, if you take that class, I talk about basically that every site should have some blog because as I mentioned over here it's part of SEO so if you take the blog class we we do brainstorming for everyone in the class that wants to do it and we talk about what's your business what are you trying to do and we all talk about it and give the person like 10 ideas for blog posts you could still do that and take it um, for this purpose So again, this is giving away free something free to build content and authority to help you get to your goal. Number five, I also really like. This one might be one of the easier ones to work on. This is posts that include lists. So blog posts that are a top 10 this, top 5 that, top 3 whatever, bottom 12 x so blog posts articles that count down something or count up something you can probably think if you're a realtor the top five most expensive regions in the u.s if i'm a fencing company the top three mistakes new homeowners make whatever you can make up all of these ideas for top three top five top ten top seventeen the number doesn't matter these are valuable because people can digest them in small chunks. If I look at some sort of list, we've got some here on our own website. On our blog, we have you know, the top three WordPress. Top WordPress plugins part one. So this one uh, is, a, is a three. It doesn't literally also need to be marked as one, two, three, whatever. But we've got these three WordPress plugins we recommend. I might have an idea for 10 WordPress plugins to recommend. But I'm not going to waste all 10 on one article. I could put five on one and next month publish part two. That gives incentive for people to subscribe or come back to the site. This is three uh, plugins we recommend. It's got text, it's got a little graphic to catch your attention, it's got a way to share, and then it has, why don't you check out this other one, part three, whatever, comment, so basically lists. Um, these are digestible. They can be spread out to many um, days, and uh, if you if you write this and you have a link to some other website and you tweet this, I could tweet. Here's our top WordPress plugins part one. Special thanks to Duplicator.com. On Twitter, I could mention some other authoritative figure 
and when you praise people they like it so that other account that I praised on Twitter might retweet me might share my tweet I've got perhaps 200 followers on Twitter but I mentioned the Twitter account that had 2,000 so maybe that Twitter account says thanks for that and they retweet me so now I've reached 2,200 instead of just the 200 that I had originally so that's a whole big discussion in the social media class but that's why you want to create content that is shareable so that someone that could be a big influencer on social media could further share it happens all the time uh, in our company or or myself uh, like on Twitter I I um, I like to watch a certain TV show and I posted a picture that TV show has a comic book I, I posted a picture of myself holding the comic book and I said I love this show or whatever and then the original show retweeted me and then suddenly you know 5,000 people saw me in from my only own instead of my only 600 followers I suddenly was seen by many more people because I also kind of like jumped on someone else's coattails on social media, and that's a perfectly good strategy. Who else can I connect with? Maybe I'm going to make my own amazing version of a snowball cookie and mention Brown Eye Baker on Twitter, and they'll say, cool, and they'll retweet mine, and I'll get more views. Um, I don't want to give all of these away. You do want to look at the book yourself. I'll mention one more very briefly and then we'll take a break. It does mention YouTube and such. YouTube and video sites are ascending. You do want to get on some sort of video site at some point. Let me show you the example of our company, YouTube, youtube.com slash PMD Interactive. We've got various videos here. And various tech things. I mentioned probably in this class that social network Peach. We've got a video about it. How to use Peach like a pro. It's one week old. It's got about 300 views now. So in it we're spending some time showing off the social network, showing off basically that we know about social media, what to do, hire us, right? Giving something away for free. This one that's three months old on how to make a basic website only has 29 views. You're not guaranteed on this stuff at all. You're not guaranteed on getting views. One bit of popularity doesn't translate to another bit of popularity. Going back a little bit further, three months ago we also published how to build an Android app in five minutes, 10,000 views. Almost up to 11,000 now. This other one about food staging, how to stay to it, 30 views. So they really range. You don't know what's going to hit. So you don't have to be doing 12 minute videos, 7 minute videos, 5 minute videos. You can be doing 40 second videos, 1 minute long videos. These will have some amount of traffic. This is a big topic that, that we don't have time to get into, but videos could be very valuable for you. They could go viral. They could then build upon themselves because the point of then this having so many views is YouTube lets you link one video to another video. So when someone watches this video, all oh, these 10,000 views, someone watches this video, then we can guide them to look at this other video. Well, what's the point of all the videos? Again, what are you doing in social media? Is it helping you get more traffic back to your website? Maybe you sell video lectures. So maybe you give away a 10-minute clip of your hour-long video. You put right here. Uh, you know, the ten, uh, top 10 WordPress tips preview, and it's 10 minutes long, and then at the end of the video it says, and if you want the rest of the video, come to our website and buy it for only $3. People do that all the time. Video obviously takes much more effort, much more work, all of this stuff. You know, this, this took at least 12 minutes to create. This video was recorded probably, it was probably 18 minutes long, or 14 minutes long, whatever, when it was first recorded. And then it took much longer to edit and create. How do I know I'm... After the ad, we'll see here. So there's a little bit of branding. Let me see here. Let me play it for just a moment, and then I'll explain it. 
Hello everyone, this is Victor for PMD Interactive. Let's take a look at the latest and greatest social network on the block, and it's Peach. This is the Peach social network. At the moment, it's only available for iOS devices. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the volume uh, of... But eventually it'll branch out, so if you're an... Sometimes the volume of our computers here don't work, but anyway, I've got... Um, here this branding, how to use Peach, so a how-to instructional video. Hello everyone, um, this is Victor directly from PMD from the iPad. Let's take a look at the latest and greatest social, social network, network. What to do block. exactly? And it's Peach. You get this app this and how do I work it? What do I click on? Moment, it's only available so then I'm for narrating iOS, it and email, I'm showing yeah, beginning to end how to create screen, an account, what photo, are the different buttons and screens like are. Let's search for a cat. Then actually my use it. So here far it's got about 300 views. Some text, it's a picture, it's, um, a gif. It's telling me, cool, right? It's we call that old. a magic word. The social network itself is two weeks old. So this is about that timely, relevant content. We created this video. Look at our contemporaries. Carlos Gill has his own version of what Peach is. 44 minutes long, 180 views. Just Cause TV, their own version of it, three minutes long, 119 views. CBSN, that's a big network, they've got a little bit less than us. They've got hundreds of followers, we've only got 54, but our video, for various reasons, has got a few more. This one, yeah, um, Carlos Gill, here's got 5,000 views on his, but he's got thousands of followers. Now, I, he's double dipping, if you notice. He made this one, and he made that one, so he's got two versions of the video, a seven-minute look and a 44-minute look. But the 44-minute look is not taking off like the seven-minute look. It might be too long. People might not stay to watch it non-stop for 44 minutes, but they may jump around in it. And uh, if, you design your, if you design your video in a way that... Um, that you can actually make... Um, You can make chapter stops in a YouTube video. For example, here's a video. Well, di different, different things. Not exactly that, but it, down here on this particular video, in the description, it's marked right here. If you want to see this chapter, just click here. That's super easy to do. You just write your time code in your description, and it makes a chapter. That's it. So if you, someone doesn't want to watch this 22-minute video, it's got 28 views so far, five thumbs up. If you want to jump straight to Tip number two, there it is at 10 minutes. You don't have to watch 10 minutes and guess. But, um, this Nadex is a binary options. Of Never heard of them? Um, Maybe heard of them. You're not alone. That we can't quite get into, but in the social media class on the day that we talk about YouTube, we talk <coughs> about this. When the class is long enough, we talk about how to create a video, because you can create videos, you have the technology for it, and it's, it can be either very free or very inexpensive to very expensive to create a video. But then to, up, to create a channel and upload it, this is own to optimize for YouTube is its own realm of SEO, actually, on YouTube, if you take that class. But this could be another thing. This is a financial company showing you start to finish how to survive. If you're paying attention to the stock market, it's a very volatile time at the moment, trillions of dollars of money has just disappeared from the global economy. Well, here's the top five tips to investing in this weird economy from beginning to end. And that's what this book is saying, that YouTube is very valuable. It takes much more effort, but it could pay off. And you don't know what will pay off. You know, a short video, a long video, the content of your video, does it relate to other people's video and what they need to, to, to view. So lots of things to think about. I do recommend to get that book. It's $3.99 for the Kindle version. It's probably about $6 for the printed version. But um, we'll take a break in just a moment. Any general questions about what we've talked about? Do you have a way of knowing if all the work you folks put into making all those things like on Pinterest and so forth has actually paid off in Yeah, various ways because you can see from within Pinterest or within YouTube your traffic and such. And if you run it the right way, you can have, for example, <clears throat> this works best on the restaurant clients, but we have something on YouTube, let's say, 
and then there's a link somewhere here about buy that. We can easily correlate that. We look in the cash register. We, we, we do a report of, of inventory to see that that has actually worked. Some other businesses might be a, a little bit harder to quantify that, but if you're trying to sell something, that's how you'll most obviously see a result because you've sold more of something after you engaged in social media. Something else, uh, some other avenues might be a little harder to, to tell, but yeah, you get all of this data and you can corroborate it and correlate it to see how effective you are. So uh, let's take a break. It's 7.40. We'll be back at 7.50 and we'll talk more. We'll give you this handout and we'll, we'll look back at our data.